Uh, when I think of the Miami Dolphins, I don't think of Tua. I don't think of Tyreek Hill. I think of Joy Taylor. Uh, that's it, because uh, she and I used to sit together on weekends and talk about sports all the time, and Jason T uh, Taylor's younger sister, and therefore, uh, I, I know you've had a very, very long history with this team. But, Joy, help me out real quick, because I know you got your Steelers ties, too. So, Steelers and Dolphins play each other. Which side are you on? <laughs> uh, it depends on who it matters more to. <laughs> okay. I, I have kind of a... A unique football fandom because I grew up in Pittsburgh. I was born and raised there, and it's a cult to support the Steelers, um, which I happily participate in. But obviously, I've been watching the Dolphins for 25 years, so um, they, they play each other every once in a while. And it usually is uh, that's usually where I lean. It's like, eh, if it matters more to one team or the other, I'll root for that. And then obviously, when my brother was playing, it was always the Dolphins. So I think Sunday with the Niners and Dolphins, and hello, Joy, thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I think the the game with the Niners and Dolphins is both teams are kind of in a weird spot because I don't think any anybody's going to remove either team from the Super Bowl contending conversation with this game. But I think the, the winner is going to be one of those teams that's like, oh, they might be the best team in their conference. Uh, do you think this game matters more for one or the other? agree with that it's, it's pretty evenly matched i don't not going to overreact too much to this game either way but i do think if i had to choose I, I think it matters more to the niners because to me the dolphins have a few really convincing signature wins in the bills and the ravens and the best win when i look at the niners schedule to me was the chargers and you know i i, I think that's a nice win it's certainly a very good win but we don't really know how good the Chargers are. So we know the Dolphins are a great team. So to me, if the Niners can continue this incredible defensive stretch that they've had and take down the Dolphins this weekend, that would be a win where I'm like, okay, I, they've, I'm going to start to ignore those weird losses earlier in the season more. Speak on FS1 is the show where we watch Joy Taylor all of the time. And Joy was watching a piece of what you guys were doing yesterday. And the question comes up, who gets the credit for uh, the large share of the 49ers' success over the last three to four years? Is it more of a Kyle Shanahan thing? Is it more of a Jimmy Garoppolo thing? It looked like the panel was all in mostly on Kyle Shanahan getting much more credit than Jimmy Garoppolo. Would you expand on that? Why, why did most of you seem to feel that way? Uh, well, I'm pretty sure Emmanuel Acho was, was firmly in the Jimmy Garoppolo camp where he, he, he usually is. Uh, and I understand his, his arguments because, you know, Shanahan's record without Jimmy Garoppolo is pretty staggering when you compare it to when Jimmy Garoppolo is playing. But I think it's twofold for me. One, I think the rest of the league got an opportunity to get their hands on Jimmy Garoppolo this offseason, and there were no takers. Um, so that kind of gave me pause because when, you know, the market kind of tells you what you are. And if there were definitely teams that could have benefited from having Jimmy Garoppolo this year. And to me, that tells me that the rest of the league thinks that it's Kyle Shanahan. And then also, you know, I, I don't think any of us think as Jimmy Garoppolo as the best offensive player on that roster. So generally, when it's, you know, quarterback-led team, that's the case. And it's not that I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is a good quarterback, because I do. I just I can't put him in the category of a guy that I'm like, we got Jimmy, nothing can go wrong. Or we got Jimmy, I've got faith, we've got a minute left and no time else that we can get this done. <laughs> right. I mean, he certainly had moments, but that's just not, when I look at the Niners, I think of an incredible defense, I think of incredible schemes, I think of Kyle Shanahan's genius, and of course, an unbelievable run game. Uh, Joy, do you know how much it picks a scab here for a lot of the people listening to you right now that you couldn't even get through that sentence without laughing when you were talking? Just laughed right in Yeah, Jimmy's like face. Jimmy Garoppolo with a minute to go, he's got the ball, and, and you just... You started to giggle, and that's that's uh, that's that's tough for us, Joy. Listen, I like Jimmy a lot. I do. I think Jimmy's a very – he's a fascinating player because he does win so much mm -hmm. that he's, like, just good enough that you're like, ah, I think we can do it with Jimmy. But the other thing that really always throws, throws me is that the Niners trusted Trey Lance. And, like, if I trust 
to an organization in which the Niners are a very well-run organization, and if I trust Kyle Shanahan, which I think we all do, they're in the building, and they're telling you straight up, we don't want Jimmy Garoppolo. We want a mm. rookie quarterback. Now, that could have been a mistake, obviously, but too soon to tell. But I, would have, I wouldn't have done that. I would have stuck with Jimmy Garoppolo and put more pieces around him. And when you look at the, the picks that they used to get Trey Lance and what Miami did with that, I mean, sure, it's, uh, you know, yep. obviously the money would have to match, but it's kind of <laughs> tough to argue. Like, wouldn't you want some of those pieces on the Niners right now? Yeah, over Trey Lance, I think for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so you you said that Jimmy's not a not a player that you're going to like. You can win with him, but he's not going to be the reason you win games. And I, I I agree with that. But is Tua in that same bucket for you? Given where he was last year, and now Mike McDaniel comes in, and Tua suddenly looks like an MVP candidate. Well, I mean, listen, there's no denying that Mike McDaniel has brought the best out into a both personally and on the field. I mean, I, I, I think everyone can agree with that and it's not a slight at all. I do think that coaching really matters in the NFL and Mike McDaniel's done an unbelievable job, but I also think I can't hold everything that happens a year before with a young quarterback against them. You know, once you get into your, you know, your, your, you've gotten your contract and you're kind of in your groove and, you know, it's, it's like uh, getting out of college. Like you get your job and you get in your routine. Like uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna judge you a little bit less that you know you have the same thing year to year. But two has gone through a lot. He's a completely different player this year than he was last year. So I, I don't feel that way about Tua right now. Not the way that he's playing this year. He's playing with a lot of confidence. He's had big moments. Um, certainly that Ravens game and that comeback was unbelievable. I think. The thing that is still giving a lot of people pause is last year, and of course that moment in the beginning of the season where he got the concussion and missed a few games when we saw what the Dolphins were without Tua. But mm. I don't think that Tua is the same player as he was last year. And he, you know, that's what you want. <laughs> you want young players to get better every single year. Joy Taylor is with us on 95.7 The Game. Weather and Dibs. Kyle is in for Dibs today. Joy, I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by this too. Both teams come in on a winning streak. Both of those winning streaks are dotted with a whole lot of wins over, you know, just kind of unimpressive opponents. So it, it does feel like both teams can sort of use this game to prove something. What what specifically do you think each of these teams need to prove? Um, I think Tua just needs to keep being consistent with his play. Uh, it's going to be an interesting game because they have some injuries on the offensive line which is concerning for me for the Dolphins, uh, especially the way that the Niners' defense has played over the last four games, which I don't care how bad the opponents are. They're still NFL teams, and to not let any points be scored in the second half in four straight games is unbelievable. Um, so I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to, like, minimize that. Um, so I think that would be that would be really impressive for the Dolphins for me to overcome that. And then, of course, you know, they've been on the West Coast, on the road for a week. So that would be a big win. To me, I really want to see more from the Niners' offense. Um, obviously, you got to win last week, but not really a whole lot of fireworks from the offensive side of the ball. Um, so I'd like to see a little bit more from the offense from the Niners and, um, you know, just a lot of points. Just a little more of an um, impressive win from that perspective. And again, like I said, if you beat the Dolphins, the Niners to me, coming off of a streak of, you know, unimpressive opponents, that would say more to me about where the Niners are trending than, you know, overall where everyone is with how the Niners are on paper. So that leads perfectly into my next question. Where do you put the Niners in kind of the NFC hierarchy? So I have the Eagles at the top. Um, I've mm -hmm. been on the Eagles bandwagon since, since day one. I really, I think I'm an early buyer on, on Jalen Hurts. But I love what the, what the Eagles have done all season long. They've been the most consistent and dominant team in the NFC to me. Uh, I do not trust the Minnesota Vikings at all. That has a lot to do with Kirk Cousins. But I think that, you know, they're a good team. You can't win as many games as they have without being a good team. But, in you know, in big moments, I'm just, I still can't. So can't give it to Kirk Cousins yet. So honestly, it's at the top of the NFC. It's it's the Eagles and and the Niners for me. I have Dallas up there as well. Um, but again, how can you trust them in the in the postseason? So the NFC is really it's a really strange conference 
this year because I think a lot of the teams that we thought were going to be really terrible or struggling have kind of either made a resurgence or, you know, had some really nice moments. Like, you know, the Giants, I didn't expect much from this year. Brian Dable's done an amazing job there. Green Bay, we certainly expect to be better. They're a disaster. The NFC South is a nightmare. <laughs> and then, you know, you have the rest of the NFC West, which, you know, the, Ram- the Rams and the Cardinals would certainly expect to be better, and they're they're struggling as well. So I know I haven't mentioned Seattle. We'll see how that goes as the rest of the season plays out. But I, I have the Niners at the top of the NFC um, just behind the Eagles right now. Joy, a whole lot of fun to have you. Thank you so much. You doing good? Everybody treating you okay over there? Everything is great. The new show has been awesome. I, I appreciate everyone uh, supporting it and checking us out on Speak. And uh, how are you? We have to catch up. I haven't talked to you in a long time. I know. I know. You guys just yeah. do this. I'll yeah, hang out. You want to do it great. right now, or do you want me to call you later? I'll or just what, chime do you, in. what do you think? <laughs> let's, let's not bore you, everybody. Okay. Yeah, All right. I was personally <laughs> enthralled, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been a minute, so we should. Joy, thank you so much, and I will. I'll call you soon. <laughs> thank you, guys. All right, sure. there it is. Joy Taylor, speak on FS1. And Kyle, you did it.